This question will walk through another example of how to account for an asset retirement obligation. Bling Corp erected and placed into service an offshore oil platform on January 1st, 2020 at a cost of $10 million. Bling Corp is legally required to dismantle and remove the platform at the end of its nine year useful life. Bling Corp estimates that it will cost $1 million to dismantle and remove the platform at the end of its useful life and that the discount rate to use should be percent. And the first thing that we're asked to do is prepare the entry to record the asset retirement obligation. Assume that none of the $1 million cost relates to production. So here's the question, what should we record the asset retirement obligation at? We're told that, so in the question, we're told that they erected the, they placed into service an offshore oil platform at a, the cost is 10 million. We're told that it has a nine year useful life and that it's gonna cost a million dollars to remove and that the discount rate is 8%, but we're not told what we should record it at. And we know that we need to record the asset retirement obligation at the present value of the future cash flows. We don't know what the future cash flows are. We know that in nine years, we're gonna to have to pay a million dollars, but what's the future value of that? So let's get out our financial calculators and give this some thought. So what do we know? So we know that the interest rate is 8%. We know that the number of periods is nine years, the useful life. We know that on all asset retirement obligations, the payment is always zero. And we know that the future value of these cash flows is going to be negative 1 million. So we know we have to pay a million dollars in the future to dismantle this. So it's not like a bond where we're gonna get well, we'll have to pay out a million dollars when the bond, bond matures for the company, we'll have to pay out a million dollars to dismantle this platform at the end of the nine years. So that gives us enough information to put in the present value. So if we put in eight, so I eight and nine, payment zero and future value negative 1 million and hit compute present value, we will receive the present value as 500,000, So we can round that to, we'll just round it to 500,249. So I'm just gonna round this to 500,249. So now we know that this is the present value. So what's our journal entry then going to be? to record the asset retirement obligation. Well, we are going to record debit, uh, drilling platform, because it's part of the asset that we're gonna capitalize. So debit drilling platform, 500, and credit, we're gonna have the set up this liability called asset retirement obligation. Retirement obligation. And that is going to sit as a liability on our statement of financial position. And this is our capital asset as the debit. So, of course, this is going to be the 500,249. So, you can see that what we can take away from this is that we always record the asset retirement obligation on our statement of financial position at the present value of the future cash flows, which sometimes we're given in the question but sometimes we need to calculate using our financial calculator. We, we know how much it's gonna cost us in the future. We're usually given that information, but we need to make sure we're accounting for the time value of money and what the present value of that cash flow is today. So you can see that the present value of a million dollars nine years from now is only almost half that, 50249. And then of course, we'll be increasing the value of this as time progresses for our asset retirement obligation. We'll get to that in a minute. And when we, once we know what the present value is, we put the debit to the capital asset and we put the credit to this liability for an asset retirement obligation on our statement of financial position. So the entire entry is balance sheet or statement of financial position. Nothing here has gone through our income statement. Okay, let's take a look. So now we've done one. Number two, 
Prepare any necessary adjusting entries that are associated with the asset retirement obligation and related expenses at December 31st, 2020, assuming that Bling Corp follows A, IFRS, and then B, ASPE. Ignore production-related costs for this question and round the amounts to the nearest dollar. So now we need to know what type of adjusting entries are required for the asset retirement obligation at December 31st, 2020. So remember how we just said that we've recorded this asset on our balance sheet at the present value of future cash flows? Well, we need to do two things. So we've got two components here. We've got an asset and we've got a liability and they actually both require adjusting at the year on date. So we need to depreciate the asset and which is because this is the, the drilling platform and we need to uh, record interest expense or accretion expense on the asset retirement obligation. So let's take a look at that. So year end adjusting entries. And this is gonna be December 31st, 2020. So there's two types of year-end entries that we're gonna to need to record. So we're gonna to need to record depreciation on the asset. Okay, and this depreciation, I'm just gonna change my color here so we can be clear. Um, okay, so depreciation on the asset. So we are going to have, so we know that we've got our asset here is 500 249 and we also know that 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 it has a useful life of nine years so to calculate our depreciation expense we're simply going to have the value of the asset 500 249 divided by nine years we're going to do straight line amortization here unless we're told otherwise we're always doing straight line so this is going to give us an annual depreciation of fifty five thousand five hundred and eighty three dollars per year and so this is our first entry that we're going to record and we're going to do this under, let's start with our first one is IFRS. So let's start with that. So, oops, okay, one sec. IFRS is going to be, one second, make this. Okay, so our journal entry for the depreciation is going to be debit, depreciation expense. And a 55,583. And then where do we put the credit when we depreciate something? Well, we're always gonna have an accumulated depreciation account on our statement of financial position, accumulated depreciation drilling drilling platform. Okay, and so this is going to be our 55,583 credit. So now we finished part one of our two year-end entries. The second adjustment is going to be under IFRS to record, it's going to be to record the increase in the asset retirement obligation. And that's true of IFRS or ASPE. We're always gonna to need to depreciate the asset and record the increase in the asset retirement obligation because as a year passes, the present value of the million dollars in the future is gonna get closer. Therefore, it's gonna be um, worth more from a time value of money perspective. So the way that we figure out what the increase is in the ARO is we take the present value of the cash flows, which we have right here. Remember, we calculated it as 500, 249. So we're going to have 500, 249 times the discount rate, which was 8%, right? That was our I. So that is going to give us an interest expense of 40,020. So our Entry under IFRS is going to be debit. So IFRS records this account called interest expense and credit ARO, because of course we're increasing the liability on the statement of the financial position and interest expense of course goes through our income statement. So we're gonna have $40,020, $40, sorry, 
$20 each year is going to go through. This amount will change because now the carrying value is lower of the, uh, or it's higher of the arrow. So the next year we would have 500, 249 plus 40,020 times 8%. Um, but this is our entry in year one. So those are our two year end adjusting entries under IFRS. So if we take a look up at the question, so we've got assuming IFRS, so we did that one. Now let's take a look at ASPE. So how are the year end adjusting entries the same under ASPE? Well, first of all, we still depreciate the asset under ASPE, depreciate the asset, and it's exactly the same as IFRS. So the entry would be identical to this entry here. No changes, exactly the same accounts, debit depreciation account, credit accumulated depreciation, and that was our present value divided by the nine years, which is what gave us the amount. Now, the second entry, which is going to be increase the ARO, is exactly the same as our entry here as well, except we're going to hit a different account. So let's see what that looks like. So this account here under IFRS is going to be under ASPE is going to be debit accretion expense. So ASPE uses the terminology accretion expense instead of interest expense. So that's the debit here, 40020. And then the credit is still going to go to the ARO, 40020. That's exact. So the entry is the same. The amounts are the same. The way that we calculated the amount, which was the present value times the 8% to get the 40020. The 40, $20 is exactly the same. We simply use an accretion account instead of an, instead of an interest expense account. So we use interest expense under IFRS and accretion under ASPE. Okay, so now we've completed all of number two. So number three, assume that the increase in the asset retirement obligation in 2020 related to the production of oil in 2020 was $61,942. Prepare any necessary adjusting entries or any necessary entries to record the increase in the asset retirement obligation at December 31st, 2020, assuming I for us and then ASPE. Okay. So here what's happening is that this isn't just due to the, the, um, the present value of, or the time value of money, which is what taking into account this increase in the ARO, which is gonna go to either depreciation expense or accretion expense uh, relates to. This has to do with the fact that the more oil you take from the site, the more damage in some sense you're doing to the site because the deeper you're digging or what have you. So therefore we need to increase the ARO by an extra 61,942. So how is that entry different between IFRS and ASPE? So let's go part three, increase in ARO due to production. So this is a different type of an increase. It's not time value of money, it's due to the production. So what this looks like is, so IFRS, how would IFRS record this? IFRS is going to go debit inventory. So it considers this increase in the, um, the ARO to be related to inventory because it's related to more taking more oil. Therefore, it should be a uh, product cost. So $61,942 here. And then the credit is going to be to ARO because we know that ARO needs to increase by 61942 That's exactly how it explained the fact that more oil was taken. Therefore, we needed to increase the ARO. So I think the credit's clear, but the debit under IFRS is to inventory. And this is the exact amount that it gave us in the question. So we didn't have to do any calculations for that. If this was ASPE, it's the same entry, except it's going to debit the asset. So it's going to debit drilling platform, which was the, the name of the capital asset that we were using. Okay, which is our debit 61,942. And our credit is still, of course, to ARO, same thing. The amounts are the same. 
Again, the difference is where the debit goes. So the debit goes to the asset here and it goes to inventory here. So let's recap. What are the differences in accounting for ARO between IFRS and ASPE? So the differences in ARO accounting. So we've got, let's go IFRS and then let's go ASPE. So the increase in the ARO due to the time value of money Under IFRS, it goes debit, interest expense, credit arrow, increasing the arrow because of the time value of money, and ASPE says debit accretion expense. Just a different terminology, credit arrow, okay? So that's our first difference. Our second difference is that production increase in the arrow due to production. So IFRS is going to go debit, inventory, credit arrow. Notice that in both of these examples, we're always increasing the arrow, but it's the debit that's going somewhere else. And ASPE is going to debit the asset. So say the drilling platform and credit the arrow. And those are really the fundamental differences between IFRS and ASPE for arrow accounting. If we want to just do a quick recap around how do we account for the arrow, how to account for the arrow asset retirement obligations. So the first thing is we record the arrow at the present value of the future cash flow, or more likely the amount it will cost us. to restore the site. So we know often we're told, listen, in 20 years, you're gonna to have to restore the site and it's gonna cost you $10 million. And um, you know, you'll be given a discount rate. And as long as you have that information, you can calculate this present value. Because remember the time value of money, the present value of $10 million in 20 years is not $10 million, it's something less. And then the next thing we're gonna to need to do is at each, year end, we are going to need to depreciate the asset, which is simple straight line. And we're going to need to increase the ARO for the time value of money. And this is usually the present value times the discount rate or the carrying value, I should say, carrying value, because you'll need to adjust that each year. Okay, and then we also need to watch out for increases in the arrow due to production. So you have to be given this information for, to record this, um, to record the, the increase in the arrow due to production because the increase in the arrow that we're expecting is due to the time value of money. But if the production exceeds our initial expectation, we'll need to also increase the arrow. And that's simply gonna be debit, inventory or asset, depending on whether it's IFRS or ASPE and credit the arrow. Of course, whenever we're increasing the arrow, we're crediting it. So that takes us through the conclusion of part three of this question. And hopefully that gives you a good overview of accounting for an asset retirement obligation.